Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending what time you're watching this. Welcome to the latest edition of Lunchtime Learnings. I'm delighted and honoured to be joined by Maxine Fothergill, the president of Arla Property Mark, which is a real honour. Also the MD of Amex Estates and Property Services Limited. So thank you so much for joining. It's lovely to see you again. Makes a thank change you. that we're not meeting at events. Um, <laughs> but thanks very much for joining me. So um, how's your presidency been so far? Enjoying it? Loving it. Loving every moment. It's um, It's been a great journey. Uh, it, well, it all started, as you know, um, well, you might not know, actually. Um, but how it actually works with Property Mark is that you start by being voted in by members um, yeah. two years prior. So you first start off as a vice president and then you do that stint there. Um, then you go into being a president elect and then you get in the big hot seat and you become the president. So you do get a little run up to it uh, or an apprenticeship period, I suppose you could call it. So you're not just thrown in the deep end. No, no, no. Um, it, it's very much you, a lot of help and support is provided by the organisation. And, and it's a big role to take on. So, you know, thank goodness there is that sort of support that you actually, it, that, you know, any president t uh, team actually receives prior to actually being out there and, and meeting members and becoming really main ambassador. Brilliant. Well, look, let's start at the beginning. Okay. How did you get? How did you get into agency? So tell us a little bit about us, uh, about yourself or the audience, and what made you become a letting agent, a state agent, and then decide that you wanted to become El Presidente. Okay. Well, uh, my journey actually started back in 1988, um, and um, I was not an estate agent. I had no intentions of actually becoming an estate agent, a letting agent, or or anything really. I was working actually in foreign exchange banking. And um, at that time, I became pregnant um, with my first son. And interest rates at that time was uh, just over about 15.4%. And we couldn't afford for me to actually like give up work, have a baby um, and pay our mortgage. You know, it was actually a really serious situation. Um, and I, there was a, a, I knew I had to get a second job to be able to just sort of cover our mortgage um, as well as, you know, taking a bit of time out when the baby was born to be able to, uh, you know, try and actually deal with the, the mortgage costs without not paying a mortgage because obviously you still got to pay your mortgage, otherwise you won't have a roof over your head. Um, so I ended up looking for a, a second job and that was how I started. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So for me, uh, what happened... I saw a job advertised for a company called Robinson Jackson. And you. Uh, you might have heard of them. Quite a I large company well. and in my area anyway. I know um, them well. You do, yeah, Peter. Um, so, uh, but at that time they hadn't actually, because I think up from, you know, working from them, I think then they got bought out by um, the Halifax and then the Prudential it, and then Rains Reed. It's, it's definitely, it's gone through sort of varying different things. And I think it's now back in the, in the clutches of Robinson Jackson again. Now. So they sort of reinvented and gone over things over the years, but it was definitely the Robinson Jackson. It was the flagship branch. It was um, the Bexley branch. And I was their Saturday girl. I went in there every Saturday. I opened up the shop um, and I met and gre greeted people um, all on my own, given the keys. Um, and I would uh, make sure that, you know, when people came in to register and I'd answer all the phone calls. So that was how my journey started <laughs> by default. I think the same with most of us, generally by default. OK, so then how did you go from Saturday girl to being MD of Amex Estates? What was that journey? Okay, well, then it, I kind of like, I stayed there for a while, had the baby, everything else. Um, and um, then my path went back into sort of more corporate and the work that I'd been doing, um, did other jobs. And then I, something I'd always wanted to do was start investing in property. And buy to let started, it was it's actually it's the 25th year on buy to let this year. Um, so I was sort of got into it quite early doors. 
um, I think it was 1998, we decided to buy our first property. And for some reason at that time, I thought that I was going to become a millionaire by buying one property. <laughs> um, little did I know that wouldn't work like that. Um, we didn't actually go through a buy to let route at that time. We went through remortgaging our own house, which we had a fair amount of equity in. Nobody did that because we clearly had a lot of um, work that we needed to do. So we borrowed some money to be able to do upgrades to our house. Um, and along with those upgrades came our first property that we actually ended up buying. I think it was £55,000 I paid for my first flat. <laughs> and um, and that was... you need more now. <laughs> yeah. I don't have it anymore. I actually sold it about four years ago, but I did sell for a huge profit on what I'd actually bought it back in, in 1998. Um, it went really well. Um, so we bought that one. We then decided to buy another one, and then it kind of went on from there. And then I got very, very involved with the letting sector. I then started my own branch of a landlord's association, um, which was all tied into a, a, an organisation at that time called Southern Private Landlords, which actually is owned by the RNLA now. <laughs> so um, that sort of all got swallowed up over the years. Um, I then got involved with the NFRL, which is now all part of the <laughs> NRLA now. Um, and uh, they represented 10,000 landlords. Got um, I became the uh, vice president or the vice chairman of, of that organisation. And as we were growing our portfolio, um, what I realised is that many of our local agents were very, very young, very inexperienced, and I knew a lot more than they did. Hence, that's why AMAC started, um, because I felt very despondent and um, disappointed in what I was actually getting locally when I knew that, that a lot of the information I was given was not actually correct. Um, and so I decided to give up everything that I was doing and... I think it was at the time also I'd been made redundant. So I had a bit of money behind me um, from a job I'd been working in, in corporate um, and to put my money where my mouth was and to start my own agency. Hence, uh, that's why um, AMAC started 20 years ago. OK, so happy anniversary. Thank you. Um, it's yeah. amazing 20 years. So there's a few questions I would love to ask you now with everything you've just said. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I just want to start. So, you know, there's a lot of people that are watching this uh, letting agents, a lot of people that are, are struggling to get to get landlords as well. You know, obviously you had a big um, property empire um, 20 years ago um, and you were unhappy with what you saw in the agents. Um, how did you go out and get those first landlords? So if there are people today, I mean, everybody wants more landlords, isn't it? You know, yeah. um, what was the silver bullet then? I'm sure it most probably hasn't changed um, well, the, a lot. Yeah, well, at the start of actually, um, when I started the agency, I didn't have a, a very large portfolio at all then. I think I only had around four properties at the time. Um, but we knew there was something that my husband and I knew that we wanted to grow a portfolio. So we didn't have many at that time because um the buy to let had only just started and the interest rates were relatively high um and it became easier and easier sort of within that, those early years anyway um but how did i start well that was quite easy really it was, i went to every friend that i knew that had joined my landlords association um and other friends that i knew that were also landlords and i asked them if they would be prepared to give me a chance and to start you know at marketing with me now in those days there was no internet um and no social media and the way that we obviously used to be able to market our properties was the local newspaper um so you take out a page in the local newspaper that would cost you an absolute arm and a leg um and you would use a lot of like leather on your shoes <laughs> to get out there and to put leaflets out and and um you know whatever you could so it's uh, i think we had a sort of five prong prong attack so um it would be word of mouth so like friends family anybody that you could actually get to leaflets um posters uh boards um and editorials 
and um i and and generally the newspapers are, are and it's still the same really today isn't it the, the newspapers and the media they're very pushed and they've got so much to do that if you write a really good interesting editorial then they very much will almost take it verbatim and they'll just stick it up for you the other thing that i did i i used to put a lot of pictures of people like i'd put me in and i'd put people in and i do believe that that does make a huge difference because who really wants to see a picture of a house it's it's a known fact that when you've got a picture of a person people are likely to look at it far more than when it's just a boring old picture of a block of flats or a house um, because it just gives a bit more interest. Oh, who is this person? Especially if you're sort of pulling a funny face or you're doing something that's, you know, hey, or you know, doing something that, that people will actually look at, that it will it has a little bit more interest. So, um, and that's what I did. And I don't think those core skills have ever actually gone away. We still, yet we don't have the old newspaper scenario. Well, some people do. Some people still use the, the, the newspapers, but not in the same way. Um, I still think that those core skills of the things that we did previously, you know, <laughs> 20 years ago, people still can get very successful and still use those along with social media. So I don't think social media is the silver bullet. I think it's a combination, a multi-prong attack or a dripping tap of varying things to be able to, to be successful. Shared loads of gold so i want to come back you know and 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 a few things you said which is really interesting that i just want to share with people that are watching this so first of all when you first got started you talked about equity so you know one of the lessons that i've learned is not a love enough letting agents are doing equity checks on their current landlords no. you know just to ask them a very simple question so maxine how long have you lived in your property for that you're currently in you're going to say five minutes now, aren't you? Uh, so. <laughs> in the house that I'm in, it will be eight years January coming up. So almost eight years that I've lived in this house. My previous okay. house, <clears throat> we've lived in for 30 years. So okay. we don't move around very often. <laughs> okay, but you've been there eight years. So, you know, you, you pay debts. It's now worth Y. You've got X amount of equity in there. You know, have you thought about taking some money out and buying a buy-to-let property? Now, that one question gives 12 revenue streams for letting agents as well, just mm -hmm. by asking that. And if anybody wants to know what those revenue streams are, give me a message and I will give you and I will let you know with pleasure. And Maxine, I'll share with you off, off, off. So we just see who actually listens. It's a little tester okay. for them. <laughs> so, you know, that that's one thing, the equity checks. I think also I found really interesting what you talk about was the landlord associations. Um, and I'd be really interesting to, to know. I'm sure there's still landlord meetings that are taking place, most mm -hmm. probably through Zoom now. You know, and I know we're getting back to face to face. But mm -hmm. from your experience, how many letting agents actually turned up to these meetings to give advice to these landlords to actually say to them, look, you know, are you aware about the 47 different compliance changes that happened um, between, um, you know, over COVID? Are you aware about the X amount of um, different letting legislations you need to be aware of? You know, and also what's going on in the local area with rent, especially so at the moment. You know, I think from my own point of view, with my son trying to rent, mm -hmm. how many tenants are there per, per property and that rents are going up, you know. And I had a landlord call me from my, you know, I haven't been in agency for nine years. And I had somebody call me only last week saying to me, Stephen, you know, what should I do? You know, I've got three offers on my property and my tenants are fighting over it. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it it's crazy. So for me, there's opportunities to go to these landlord events yeah. um, and and have and meet all these people. Um, yeah. So just out of interest, do any agents come along, or is that a, an opportunity for agents to? I mean, yeah. there's landlords there. Yes, there is. Yeah. Well, I think this is one of the things I'm very excited about. Um, I've always had a very good relationship, and as you heard from me, um, my first starting point when I became a landlord was to get involved with a large landlords association and then to decide to actually start my own branch, which went from zero to 400 in a very short period of time. 
Um, I think that it was really successful because I used to get really good speakers <laughs> coming along. Um, and at the time, we had all the 2004 Act and loads of different things that was coming up. And there, there was so much going on um, with so much legislative changes. And I was doing quite a, a lot of stuff with the government. So I'd be invited to roundtable events. So I used to invite them to come along to my meetings. And of course, government loved doing that because it ticks a box. Um, and so they will come along because then they're actually saying they've been to these big events. I remember one event that we had, um, it was literally standing room only. And there must have been about 150 landlords in that room. Um, and I used to invite them all. So I would invite landlords and I would invite agents as well, because, you know, for me, it is about an education thing. Um, but I think you're right. How many agents actually get out there? Now, I know in my local area, um, the uh, NRLA run quite a lot of the, um, the events, or they don't run them, they, they, they partner in with the local authority. But the timing of the events is very often right in the middle of the day. And in my experience, when I used to run these events, they used to be in the evenings um, because not everybody can suddenly take a day off or get to a, a, a meeting in the middle of the day. And um, although I haven't run any since COVID, prior to that, I used to run quite a lot of my own landlord events and I would advertise for, you know, non-landlords um, of, of my organisation to come along and to actually learn. One, because obviously it might give us new business um, and two it's like it's important people actually learn about what's actually going on compliance is really really important um, and so you know for, for me it's like you've got to get out there you've got to talk to landlords um, and it's about education we have over 400 different parts of legislation within lettings um, and to do the job properly, you need to be properly qualified to be able to talk to people about what you do um, and to actually know what you're talking about. And it's no good just suddenly start starting up unless you actually know what you're doing, because it's actually a very dangerous area to work in if you do not know what you're doing. Um, and you see it, you know, we've, we've become a bit like America now. We are a suing nation. If you do anything wrong, there'll always be somebody out there that's on operating on a no win, no fee basis that will be out after that agent or, or after, you know, the, the person who's done something wrong. And you hear it all the time on the radio. You know, it's like all these like no win, no fee. Come to us. We will help you. Well, that's what we've become. And this is why we have to be professional and we have to be on on our game of when we're actually doing our jobs. So how should the agents go about educating all the landlords? Because I know there's a lot of let only landlords and loads of agents would like to go from let only to fully managed. Yeah. So, you know, you touched on social media before um, and I'm a big fan of um, Megan 18. Um, I think yeah. Megan is brilliant <laughs> with her TikTok videos and yeah. and you know, how she goes about um, educating people, you know. Yeah. Is TikTok and social media the way forward to educate people? Yeah. Um, what's your views? Well, I'll share a little secret with uh, with your viewers. Um, I um, am a bit of a dinosaur when it comes to uh, social media. And I'll do a bit of LinkedIn, but I've not been doing any video. And I'm so aware that this is the way forward and all those TikTok videos. And I'm in awe of Megan. She's one of my execs. And I think she's absolutely wonderful. And I did send her a little message last week saying, Megan, would you do me a little tutorial on how to do, how to do TikTok? <laughs> so, so when you see me in future, once Megan's done the little tutorial with me, you might well see me actually doing some TikToks. But we haven't arranged anything yet. Um, you so, heard it here first. Exclusive Arla yeah. President TikToking <laughs> soon. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but education and how do you educate your landlords? Um, it's it, it's a, a pretty simple process, I think, that you encourage them to actually learn what they need to learn. At the end of the day, a landlord is a hundred percent responsible for what their agent does and what goes on within their property. 
and I think for us as agents, we need to be educating our landlords. Um, you know, we, we can do a really great job and they're there to be able to make sure we're doing our job and basically really audit, auditing us. Um, but it is our job to actually like point them in the right direction to make sure that they're doing their job well. Now, I, I am a trainer of landlords. I started training for the London Landlord Accreditation Scheme when it became a pilot back in 2004. And I've probably trained over 5,000 landlords to date. So I'm also right. a great big believer of education. And so I would be pointing landlords in, into that direction of getting training through the London Landlord Accreditation Scheme or through the RNLA scheme, anywhere where they can actually get their training. It's vital that they know what they're doing. And I also believe that this should be tied in with the Council of Mortgage Lenders. So anybody that buys a property, they they need to be aware of the rules, the regulations, the responsibilities. And I think that more could be put onto the um, council of mortgage lenders where it becomes a requisite, a, a requirement, so that landlords are fully coming into it with their eyes open. They might not want to manage it. And personally, we love taking on the landlords where we actually take, you know, not let owners, we love to manage. Um, but we still want our landlords to know that that know what that we're doing the right thing and they're auditing us they're, ch they're checking on us and that is so important landlords need to be auditing and checking to make sure that their agents are doing the right thing and for me over the years where i have trained so many landlords i've heard so many awful horror stories um, one of the sections that I do within the training is I draw a little a triangle and it's a warning triangle. And I say to, to my landlords, how many of you have had a bad experience with an agent? And you will be amazed the amount that will put their hands up and the sad, sad stories of money that's been lost, of problems that's happened. And the reason I put up that triangle is because I'm then actually saying to them that, you know, you're here today, you're learning, this is really, really good stuff. But if you are going to use an agent, and, and and I find the majority of investors, they don't want to be hands on, they want to be able to have it as an investment, it's going to be um, a retirement property, or, you know, something that's going to be that something for their children to, uh, to be able to, to be passed on as, as an investment for the family. So they've bought it as an investment. So they're not particularly interested, but they still need to know what the rules and regs are. And they still need to know that when they're appointing an agent, the agent is doing the right job. And they need to know what to look out for. So my warning triangle is about using a regulated agent. So using an agent such as a property mark agent that actually has to jump through all of those hoops to become a member in the first place. Now, I know that that isn't always the, you know, the, the silver bullet or the gold bullet or, you know, it's the, and, and sometimes things do go wrong. But generally, then there's recourse. And that's the one thing I do say to them. A regulated agent, you will have very good recourse because they will have to belong to an ombudsman. They will have to have client protection money in place. Cheap does not always mean good. And, you know, sometimes it's better paying a better fee to get a better service and a better tenant because a better tenant makes better tenant and happy landlords. So it is very much about an education process. Brilliant. There's loads of there, loads and loads there to help people. Have you got any quick, quick tips? Um, you know, just to, I'm a landlord. I'm let only. I want to go. I don't particularly want to go fully managed because um, it's going to cost me more money. Is there any small tips you can convince me why I should? You know, appreciate about using a regulating agent and giving you recourse and better fee for better service. But um, I like to keep my money in my pocket. <laughs> well, you would sound like the typical um, landlord um, that is very price sensitive. But what I would say to you is, are you aware, Stephen, as a landlord, that my fees are 100% tax deductible? So when you come and use me, every penny that you're paying to me in a professional fee is 100% tax deductible against your tax. So why would you not use me 
to do this job for you. Right, that was easy. I'm sold. <laughs> Good. <laughs> when can I start? <laughs> I will also come back to something that you said at the start, was, which was really interesting to me. And it's something that in my training I talk about. Um, and that was a very simple thing when you first started. You just asked every friend um, whether they're a landlord or not. Um, and it's amazing because look, I know obviously now from what you've told me, you know loads of landlords. So you're a great person to speak to. But here's what I find interesting is most people. So let me ask you a question, Maxine. Presumably you're interested in maximizing your investment. Yes. Okay. Most landlords I know would be. Okay. Do you know any other landlords that would also be interested in maximizing their investment? I think all landlords would be. Why wouldn't they be? Unless they're a default landlord, they've actually ended up getting the property. Um, I mean, we used to get quite a few that would fall into negative equity in the day. They're not now. But it, it, we did have quite a few over the years where they bought a property, went into negative equity, they moved on, and then it became a, a buy to let, and then they had to switch their mortgage over. Um, but no, I mean, I, I, I think... What's happened over the years is those people that kind of ended up by default and they didn't really want to do the job, they've sold on and they probably made a nice tidy profit maybe in the last year um, because we've had a phenomenal year. It's been fantastic. On, on you know, for, for those people that are in the sales sector, oh, my God, they've had the best year ever. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, I think what we've got now is we've got far more people that are professional. They're the professional landlords. They might not be a huge portfolio owner. They might only have, say, two, three or four properties. But those properties are all about actually maximising their opportunities. And they're open to actually look at how they can actually, you know, make further growth. So I do think that they're out there and they definitely are wanting to actually learn more and be more involved with how they can actually maximise profits. Brilliant. Well, I would love to take them all for a coffee. So would you be kind <laughs> enough to give me their name and numbers? Obviously, let them know that I'm going to call first and then I happily take them out. But this is what I mean about opportunities. So let's come away from the fact that you're, you know, a letting agent and you've been going for 20 years. But, you know, if you if a question comes to you, you know, to say, look, um, firstly, can I ask you, uh, Maxine, you know, this property, is this your only one or is it part of a larger property empire? And if you say it's part of a larger property empire, can I ask you, when was the last time your letting agent offered to take you for a coffee to maximise your investment? Now, 95%, the answer always comes back to me, is never. Yeah. And then would you be interested in maximising your investment? And the answer 95% of the time comes back, yes. yes. You know, And then that's the conversation you created the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Then the next conversation is just saying, well, you know, do you have any friends, family, colleagues or neighbours that are landlords as well? Yeah. Yes. Do you think they'd be interested in maximising their investment? Yes. So, you know, there's so many opportunities in front of people that it's just by asking, asking better questions. Yeah, I um, think you're right. And I also think that most people forget to ask. And I think that's, I think sometimes, you know, it, we are, we, we, we forget because we're so excited about actually taking that property that we forget to actually say, you know, and is there, have you got other properties? And can I help you with other areas? And is there other people that I can actually help? So I think that most people because that you're you're kind of stuck in the moment, you forget to actually think about the bigger picture rather than actually like what's going on right in front of you, blinkered almost. Okay, so I want to come back to um, Arla and property, Mark, and you know I think it's very important what you said, and you've given some fantastic reasons already. You know why I should be using a regulated agent, especially talking about giving you the recourse. Um, and, you know, making sure they've got client money protection and, you know, being part of an ombudsman, you know. So how would I, you know, I think Arla, fairly or unfairly, um, has some bad and negative press, you know. So why should I, as a letting agent, become an Arla member? 
Why is it important? I can I can easily answer that. Um, we have gone through some some turbulent times, um, and you know I'm not going to deny that. But what I will say is that I think that what's happened in the past is is stays in the past, and definitely for us as an organisation. Um, we are moving very rapidly into really great times. And I do say a lot of that is thanks to the to my association bringing in a very great CEO in, in Nathan Emerson. I have seen him move mountains um, in the nine months that he's actually been in place. And what was quite a fragmented organisation is actually now becoming a one stop shop it's becoming an organization which is a great place and and i feel actually really honored to be part of that to be part of that new journey moving forward and i think it's great and it's really really exciting times of um, you know where we're going now why would you want to join us so you know you've come to me and you're standing in front of me and you say so why should i join property mark you know what, what are you going to offer me well, I can tell you what I'm going to offer you. I'm going to ask you for £265. That is 72 pence a day. And what you will get for that 72 pence a day or £265 a year is you will get everything that you need as a small company to run your business. You will get support. You will be able to go along to regional meetings. You will get a legal helpline. Now, if you just want to go to a solicitor and get a bit of advice when you first start, that's going to cost you more than £265. So your membership is going to be paid for in one fell swoop just from that first phone call that you're going to make to Dutton Gregory Helpline. You're going to get all your, 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 your documentation, all the support, everything that you need. And where else are you going to get that for £265? Do you know what I love what you did there? You broke it down to 72p a day. So again, if I just put that on the flip side and take it to fully managed properties. Yeah. So, you know, actually, if you decide to go with us, do you know for less than the price of a coffee per day, yeah. you've got somebody who can give you peace of mind. He's got trusted contractors. Yeah. Um, you're not going to get a call from your tenant at three o'clock in the morning, absolutely legless to say they've lost their keys for the yeah. 22nd day in a row. Yeah. Um, and I just love the fact you broke it down. And I think, yeah. do we break this down enough on a daily basis to actually say, you know, for the price of this, yeah. this is what you're going to get. This is what the benefits are as well. So I wonder. Fantastic. I don't think we do actually. I don't think oh, then, I have uh, ever done that. So I think that's a really good point. So I know what to do in future now. <laughs> brilliant. So Thank you. A, a, Thank a, a, a very very good thing for for me for, to actually share with my staff so thank you for that one that's a great you're tip welcome. you're welcome that's my um for you coming on giving back to you so thank you <laughs> a lot i'm very conscious of time so um i know you've, you're traveling a lot and you're hearing to some exceptional speakers so you know are there any speakers that you listen to that you would recommend us um youtubing or you know looking up Ooh, or listening to yes. podcasts that you come across yeah, definitely. I've been blown away by some of our speakers. Um, recently, I met Claire Yates. I guess you probably know Claire. Oh, my God, yeah. what a wonderful, motivational speaker. I've only ever heard her the once and I've only ever met her the once, but she blew me away. She is funny. She's fun, but she gets across that point and she is a great speaker. So, you know, I definitely recommend her. Another one that I'd recommend, and I have known for probably about 22 years, possibly, um, is um, is Gail Audrey. Oh, my God, she is so good. She's so good. Um, she teaches the leadership and management um, uh, element of uh, Property Mark, um, but she's a great speaker. Um, and lovely, lady, lovely, lovely lady. So lovely. She's so good. And another one, and I've only seen her once, and I really want to back out on the circuit because she's so good. Oh, my God, her presentation. I went away and, well, I've become a member of hers because I was that impressed. Um, and that is a lady called Lindsay Archibald. And she does um, social media savvy, I think it's called. Um, but, oh, my goodness, 
she is expert as everybody it was in Ireland when I went and listened to that presentation and I think everybody in the room you could have heard a pin drop the presentation was fabulous it was so so good so yeah there's some great speakers we've got some really really good speakers everybody has to come along to the property mark meetings because they are so good <laughs> brilliant look I'm incredibly grateful for your time so if people want to get a hold of you how do they find you please they can find me. Um, my email is maxine at amaxestates.com. Um, so please don't be shy. Give me, a, drop me an email. You can also find me on the Property Mark website. Um, and there's a Property Mark email address as well. Um, so yeah, I'd welcome chatting to people, you know, getting, um, if anybody wants to talk to me, I would welcome the opportunity to actually have chat to people. Well, you've been a brilliant guest, so thanks very much. Um, you're if you're watching, please like it, share it, get the message out there um, as to why people should be joining a reg regulated body, um, all for 72p a day. Yeah. You know, what more do you want? It's an absolute bargain. So thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. And I look forward to seeing and speaking to everybody soon. Have a good afternoon, morning, evening, whenever you're watching it. Bye. Bye.